In this video, we're going to take the derivative of 1 over square root of x using the definition of the derivative, which is limit as h goes to 0 of m of x plus h minus m of x all over h. And our first step is to rewrite this in using this definition. And then we'll see what kind of algebra we can use to help ourselves out. So m of x plus h is our function with x plus h as an input. So 1 over square root of x plus h minus m of x, which is just 1 over square root of x, all over h. Now, whenever we have fractions in a fraction, sometimes uh, one of our moves we can make is to get these to a single fraction. In other words, find a common denominator and simplify that numerator. The common denominator in this case is going to be the product of our two denominators. So to give this one the appropriate common denominator, I'm going to have to multiply by square root of x over square root of x. And this one, I'm going to have to multiply by square root of x plus h over square root of x plus h. So let's see where we're at here. Now we write limit as h goes to 0 every time until we've actually taken that limit. And I've got square root of x over square root of x times square root of x plus h minus square root of x plus h over square root of x, square root of x plus h. This whole thing is all over h. So I'm going to write over 1 because in the next step I'm going to start multiplying by the, dividing by a fraction we multiply by the reciprocal. I'm going to start multiplying by 1 over h just so I don't have this huge fr double fraction. Um, so we have limit as h approaches 0 of square root of x minus square root of x plus h over square root of x square root of x plus h times 1 over h. Again, it's a little cleaner. And if I want, I can actually just put that h in the denominator here. So I'm going to do that in the next step. And then we'll see how we can get rid of the square roots on top. So I have square root of x minus square root of x plus h over h square root of x square root of x plus h. Now, if you've taken the derivative of just square root of x, one of the things you had to do was multiply by the conjugate, which is the same thing we're going to do here. We're going to multiply the top and bottom by square root of x plus square root of x plus h and on top and bottom. I'm not going to go through all the steps of this. Um, you can look at my video for de the derivative of square root of x if you want to see all the steps. Um, but this foils out very nicely on top. And in fact, all we end up with is limit as h approaches 0. And on top, this is actually just going to come down to x minus x plus h all over h. Now the denominator is going to look a little bit messy. Do not worry about multiplying it out at this point. Square root of x plus h times square root of x plus square root of x plus h. It may be tempting to do that, but it's more work than you need to do at this point. We're actually in really good shape, even though it looks a little bit messy. Because look what's going to happen on top. I got x minus x minus h when I distribute that negative. Bottom's still going to be this messy thing. X, h, excuse me, square root of x, square root of x plus h, square root of x plus square root of x plus h. But things are about to look up for us because these x's are going to cancel. Now I can cancel out this h in the denominator with this h on top, and I just get left with negative 1. And the, the beauty there is that now I can sub in my 0 for my h's. So that h is going to become 0, and so is that h. So let's see what we have left. We have just a negative 1 on top. This is still square root of x. This is now just square root of x, this term here. 
this term here in the parentheses is square root of x plus just a square root of x. That's something that we can simplify. So we have negative 1 over square root of x times square root of x times 2 square roots of x. There's a couple different ways we can write out this final answer depending on what you like. We're going to have negative 1 over the square root of x times square root of x is going to be x. So we could write it as 2x square root of x. Or you're probably more commonly going to see it as negative 1 over 2x to the 3 halves. If you wanted to, we could rewrite it as negative 1 over 2 square root of x cubed if you wanted to get the radical bar back in there. And there is our m prime of x using the definition of the derivative.